They'll might be known as the trickiest of the bizarre classes or heroes, but there are some really, really interesting items out there. And of course, with her complexity come some damn powerful options. So uh, let's take a look at my top five star items that we know so far. Coming in at number five is the turret. Uh, this is mainly here because I just think it looks insanely fun to play with and I can't wait to, uh, let's say, mess up the opponent uh, when they think they have the upper hand. The turret is a medium weapon which every eight seconds deals 16 damage. But when the opponent uses an item, you advance this by one. So every time the opponent is going to be uh, trying to do something, whether they are healing, whether they are trying to shoot back at you, the turret is going to charge faster. Now, this already sounds fun, but when you put it into context with certain classes, it gets devilishly fun. Say we have a Vanessa against us with her revolver. This item fires six times when it's triggered. That's six uses of a weapon, which for our turret is six seconds off of its already short cooldown. This thing is going to be a menace against certain builds, and I can't wait to just play against Vanessa's constantly showing clips of this in Discord channels or Reddit or whatever of a turret going absolutely wild against these certain classes. At number four, we have an item that basically represents an entire sort of archetype. Archetype's the wrong word. An entire sort of strategy or build. And these are the goggles. Uh, these represent the takeoff and landing builds. These are ones where you start at zero altitude, you want to gain some altitude, and then lose altitude back down to zero, and you have a number of items that trigger off of the takeoff or land keywords. Uh, goggles is sort of the core part of this build, and so that's why they're here at number four, representing this entire type of stealth build. The goggles are a small gear item. Every five seconds, you gain one altitude. Whenever you take off or land though, adjacent weapons get plus two damage for this fight. So this already you can see ticks a number of the boxes for this sort of type of play. You are both gaining a small amount of altitude quite regularly, so easy to knock yourself back down to zero, but it also has a trigger that powers up weapons either side of you whenever you take off or land. And there are plenty of small weapons that sort of also work on the takeoff and land thing. There are plenty of options that you can place into this build that work alongside goggles. It has so many different options and actually different play styles as well. Uh, we actually went through this one on stream and we came up with two pretty solid options. One was very defensive and the other was very aggressive. Uh, so certainly looking forward to goggles and seeing where it takes them. Now number three is back to the fun picks and this is probably the uh, most fun pick. If you haven't seen our Dooley version of this uh, video, you should definitely go check that out at the end, but we'll, we'll discuss that later. But the robot dinosaur. This is the robot dinosaur of Stell. And of course it is the space laser. Uh, this is a incredible looking uh, item and it has a channeling effect. So space laser is a large weapon which when activated will channel doing 200 damage over 5 seconds. Now this only charges, however, while you are at or above 20 altitude. So this weapon takes some getting used to, you are going to have to have some amount of altitude gain, and you're going to want to gain it pretty fast. But once you can get it, this huge laser will fire across the battlefield, channeling for 5 seconds, doing massive amounts of damage. And on top of it being cool just because it's a mega death laser from space, a la Death Star, it's also an op a version of channeling that we haven't really seen. We st channeling stuff has started to come in slowly. Stealth seems, seems to have more channeling than some of the other classes, but it was sort of put into this list as also a representative of channeling effects because they're just pretty damn cool. Number three. Number two, and we are back to sort of meta-defining items, and that is the Balloon Tower. This is one that Raynad used to great effect when he streams some style games. Again, if you haven't seen those, you should probably subscribe to the channel. We have lots of videos covering anything they do related to the Bazaar, including those games. So go and check those out after this one. You don't want to ruin my retention, do you? The Balloon Tower is a large weapon appliance that every eight seconds gains eight altitude. And when you gain altitude, deal damage equal to your current altitude. So as it says on the tin, this one kind of just does damage when you have lots of altitude. This is the sort of counterpoint to goggles which is all about taking off and landing and being at zero 
uh, balloon tower wants you to have lots of altitude. So just build lots and lots of altitude. And every time you gain altitude, the passive triggers doing lots of damage. This item also gains altitude, which triggers its passive doing lots of... This does lots of damage. I don't really know what else to say. One of the reasons why it made number two on this list, though, is not just because Reyna played it, but it's because it's an appliance. This isn't really a Stell archetype. Stell does have two appliances that we've seen so far. But the most appliances are coming from jewels. So this creates quite a nice little link between them, because we already know you are able to go and see other classes as a merchant, if you're lucky, or if you see Deborah the Nexus. So as jewels, you can visit Stell as a merchant, and if you get Balloon Tower, you can take that into your own build and probably find plenty of appliances to support it and make it that much better. But more importantly, and probably the better way round, is as Stell, you can visit a jewels merchant, and if you're really lucky, if you're unlucky, you're probably just going to get ice cubes or something, but if you're really lucky, you might get some appliances or some items that buff appliances, and you can apply those to the balloon tower and make it exponentially better. With no honourable mentions for Stell, seeing as she doesn't really have a core like Dooley has, uh, we're on to my number one. And this is the item that I personally am most looking forward to with Stell, that I personally will probably play the most around in Stell if I'm able to find it. Not what I necessarily think is the best. And that is Paper Planes. I wanted to play with Paper Planes since the beginning. Since I saw this card in the game, I just thought it was cute. I thought it was fun. It kind of fits a sort of younger Stell aesthetic type thing. I don't know. Uh, like a little prodigy spending a little time aside just building little Paper Planes and... I, she, I imagine she really gets into it, does like the tears and everything as well. Like, just exquisite paper planes. Anyway, let me get into what this does, and we can talk a little bit about why I love it so much. The paper planes are a small weapon vehicle. Every seven seconds, it deals two damage. However, its passive is that it multicasts equal to the number of vehicles you own. So, I probably don't need to explain too much as to why I like this item. It's because it does two damage. I just, two damage is just hard to pass up. It's so, so good. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, no, it's the multicast. The multicast is insane. So we've spoken a little bit in the past where dual cast, tri cast, etc. That was largely removed from a lot of items. It's been kept on just a few sparing pieces. Other than the octocast of Vanessa's Octopus, I think this is the most multicast we've seen. And it has the potential to be so much more. There are a number of items, maybe this should have been an honourable mention, but Hangar, for example, is a large building that basically at the start of the round will transform into one or two other vehicles. So first of all, that's at least giving you one extra cast of paper planes, but I'm pretty sure it could even summon another paper planes and another vehicle because it would have to replace the large, so it would be making two. There are just so many things you can do with this. There are so many options for other items that you can have alongside other vehicles that can just make paper planes trigger more. There are other items such as toolbox, which power up your weapons. There are lots and lots and lots of options here. There's the wrench that does more damage based on the number of uh, vehicles you have and you want the vehicles with paper planes. I don't... There's an entire type of build that I don't think was necessarily super intentional to be built around paper planes, but that can definitely be built around paper planes. And I just want to see this paper plane animation fire like five times. So long as you've buffed it, because that's just 10 damage, that's nothing crazy. But if you're able to buff the damage and fire it 10 times, then excellent. That's the goal. That's what I want to see from paper planes. That's what I want to see from jewels. And I want to see what a fancy paper plane does. Because throughout all of these lists, we haven't been mentioning shiny and fancy because we just don't know yet. And that really excites me for the future. I cannot wait to see what they do with those things. However, one thing we do definitely know is what Dooley items we like. Again, if you haven't seen this video, there are some incredible Dooley items. I know a lot of you are excited for Dooley, and rightfully so. If you haven't checked that out yet, you should go and see this video. I've probably already suggested what I might have as my top one, but you're definitely not going to guess the rest of them. So you need to go and check that out to see what you might want to be playing as Dooley when the uh, the game drops shortly.